Hello, this is a tutorial on how to edit your drawings in Photoshop. So you create these drawings and you want to present them in the most professional way. Well, um, we'll go through a bunch of different steps that will help your image be bright with clean lines, no smudges, no gray cast, no color cast, um, your name and professional in the corner, and then resizing it um, so that it is most easily viewed um, on the web, um, on a computer screen, etc., etc. Uh, in this case, I'm using a photograph, but all the methods that I will go through um, obviously will carry over really well to scanned images as well. In fact, you'll probably use less of these steps with a scanned image, but it's good to learn all the, the steps nonetheless. So um, to set up your space, the, the, uh, the windows that I use most often, click on Window, our history and layers. I use these all the time. The history lets you go back and kind of undo things and layers we'll get into in just a little bit. Um, first thing I'm going to do is crop the image. So I go over here to the toolbar and I grab the, the crop tool. Uh, go to the corner of what you want to crop, click, drag, and unclick. And you can see it kind of gives you a sense of where that is going to crop. You can take any of these and kind of drag them in or out. I'm going to drag it so that I get rid of that corner. You can also drag a corner in or out. So then you click um, enter or return and it'll crop it. The next thing I want to do is resize the image. Make sure it's a good size. So I go to image, image size. And it's pretty big. So first thing I want to make sure is all these are checked. Change the resolution pixels per inch. Change it to 72. That's the resolution. Um, you see these change automatically. That's okay, we're gonna leave it go. Um, the longest side you want to make 800 pixels. Not just so it fits on a screen without scrolling around to see the whole image. And then that's it. You got 72 resolution, 800 pixels. Click OK. You can see it gets teeny tiny. So you grab the zoom tool and click on it. If you ever go too far and it gets too big, um, click on Alt or Option and you can see it changes it to minus. So you can shrink it again. In this case, I'm going to leave it kind of big so you can see. Uh, the next thing we want to do is desaturate. Basically what this does is it eliminates any kind of color cast. So you go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. You can see here these are the these are the shortcut tools. Keyboard shortcuts, Shift, Command U. And there's just a little bit of a pink tone. Next thing we're going to do is adjust the levels. So you go to Adjustments, Levels, which you can see here is Command L. We'll bring up this window. Um, this is where most of the values fall in this image, which are kind of like middle grays. It's very grayed out. So I'm going to pull this white slider over to where the shape starts. And then the middle slider, you can see it affects some of the gray tones. And the dark slider is going to affect some of those black tones. Now, these lines are already pretty dark, so I'm just going to leave this generally where it is and not go too much darker. Right, maybe a tiny bit. Click OK. So sometimes you don't have very good line quality with your images, in which case what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, use a filter on it that makes the lines a little darker. So you go to Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Um, when you play with these three, you're going to see kind of how they affect the image. If you go way too far, you can see, especially with the amount, let me show you, it just is, this is way overkill. So we don't want to do this. This makes it look like Sharpie um, and, you know, spray painted. <laughs> we still want it to look like a pencil drawing. So um, we're going to kind of carry this back a little bit. I usually find that it's, that I get a good results when the amount is the highest, the radius is in the middle and the thresholds you know, furthest to the left, but you know, you can slide it around and kind of see what you get. 
I'm going to leave it right about here. Okay. You can see here in the history, um, you know, the difference between before unsharp mask and after. Our lines are a little bit cleaner. Then we're going to use the dodge tool. This is the dodge tool right here. And up here on the top, you'll see after I select the dodge tool, you have the choice of shadows, midtones, highlights. We're going to choose highlights with an exposure of 1%. The slider lets you move it around. We want very, very little. And then here you can control your brush size. You can choose any of these pre-programmed ones, but these are pretty small. So I usually crank this up pretty big so that I can kind of brush over the image really easily. Um, then you basically hold down, you click down, and you just start scrubbing. Um, you can see it's brightening the image considerably. When I go over my lines, I try to do it pretty quickly. As you can see, if I go over it too much, it starts to lighten those lines a little bit too much. So sometimes you have to be a little careful. When the lines are really dark like this, there's not too much trouble in losing your lines. You can see right here, I could scrub this forever, and those aren't going anywhere. But when the lines start to get on the light side, you have to be pretty quick about it. Then, um, you know, tip your tip your screen, look on both sides. Sometimes there's some casts that are kind of hiding that you can't see. Then you can grab your eraser tool and, you know, take out any spots that might be floating around the screen. This is pretty good, though. Do, do, do. Finish up this little corner that I missed. Um, a good thing to know how to do also is to extend your canvas size. So you go to Image, Canvas Size. So let's say you have an image that has lots of detailing in it, and you just want a nice little pocket kind of at the bottom for your name when you type in your name. So here I'm going to anchor the image to the top, and I'm going to make this image taller by probably an inch. What that does you can see it creates a little extra space here at the bottom. You can actually see that because there's still some gray <laughs> hiding. So then you want to take the type tool, T. That's your type tool. You can see here I have it set at Arial, regular, 18 point type. And I will actually change the color to a nice middle gray. Set it down here. And then if I click any other button, think that becomes kind of embedded there. Now you can see that opened up another layer, so I have two layers here. Before you save it, you have to end up flattening your layers. Um, another thing you can do with your eraser is you can change the opacity. And sometimes you might do that if you find that... Um, some of your lines are just, you know, overwhelming. But generally, um, you know, some of your guidelines might be too dark or something like that. Um, but generally, I use it in its full, full opacity. So then what you want to do is flatten your image, flatten the layers together so you can save it. Go to Layer. Wait, the button bottom is Flatten Image. Another way you can do it is over here. Flatten image is right there. Then what you can do to save it for the classroom viewing is go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Bunch of options here. I usually do two up because it gives me the fully optimized image and then um, smaller image for web. Um, here's the size of it. It's 30K. You can get up to 100K. So here you can change high gives me 56k. If I go to very high, it gives me 96k. So I don't want to go over, but I want it to be pretty decent image quality. So then I click save. Sample. You put in your name wherever you want to save the image. I already have one on there. And then there you are. You have your image. Um, hopefully that will help you in your editing and um, make your images more professional.